Hi, this is Rishi Agarwal, and this is going to be a short tutorial video about how to make animated GIFs for your radiology presentations. An animated GIF is basically an image file with multiple images within it that plays as if it were a video. And I'm just going to start this presentation to show you what they look like in a PowerPoint. So this is an animated GIF here, and it simulates scrolling through a CT scan. This is another animated GIF. The rest of these are all static JPEG images. This is another example of an animated GIF. So these are four different animated GIFs. And notice that they all started up right away and that they're all playing at the same time. So the advantages of an animated GIF over a video file are first that you can embed the animated GIF in the PowerPoint. Whereas the video file is, for the most part, they're linked to the PowerPoint. So when you're working on them, if you go to a meeting and you forget the video file, then you can't play the video. Or if you move the video file to a different folder, or if you change the name of the video file, then the PowerPoint won't know where to find it and the video won't play. Whereas that really can't happen with an animated GIF because it's embedded in the PowerPoint itself. Generally, animated GIFs have smaller file sizes compared to video files. Um, they have faster loading time and they are very reliable, whereas video files generally load a bit slower. Um, in animated GIF, there's no pausing though, whereas if you need to pause, then really you, you want to use a video file. And if you have sound in your video, then an animated GIF does not support sound, whereas a video file does. So in the rest of this video, I'm going to show you how to make an animated GIF for your presentation. The software that we're going to be using to make the animated GIF is Photoshop Creative Cloud. You can get Photoshop Creative Cloud from the NUIT store at a dramatically reduced price. I'm going to include a link to the NUIT store in the description of this video. The first step in making an animated GIF is to actually choose the files that you're interested in displaying. So the easiest way to do that is to export the whole series into JPEG from PAX and then using your personal computer select the images that you're wanting to display. So I have a chest CT here in a patient with NSIP and I'm not really interested in the upper lungs. I'm really only interested in the mid to lower lungs. So I'm going to scroll to about the carina, maybe right there, and that's going to be my first image of my animation, image 32 here. And I'm going to scroll to the lung bases just to see where the lungs end so that I can choose my last image. And I think I want to use this one, image 70. So I'm going to click image 70 here, and then I'm going to scroll up to image 32. I'm going to push shift and click on image 32. And you can see all of those are selected now. I'm going to right click on a Mac. You could select new folder with selection. And so now all of those are in a new folder. So there's two things you could do here. You could go ahead and use all of the images to make the animated GIF. And that would make a very, very smooth GIF. It would scroll very smooth. But the disadvantage is if you use every image, then you tend to have larger file sizes. And that's not really what I'm looking for, for my purposes. I'm really interested in demonstrating the pathology. So I don't really need a very smooth scroll. So instead of using every image here, I'm, I'm going to select just half of them. And an easy way to do that in the Mac is to just um, reduce the size of the window and for, I'm just going to use the even number. So that's going to cut down the number of images in my animation by half. So I'm going to select all of those, right click, and then make another new folder with selection. So now I only have 20 images in my animated GIF. So that's going to be our starting point for making our animation. Okay, so f the first step, once you have your images selected and placed in a separate folder, is to load them into Photoshop. And to do that, I'm going to go to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. Then I'm going to click Browse. Then I'm going to browse for my folder with my new items, which is here. 
and um, you notice I've got only the even numbers here which is what I want and I'm gonna click one and then I'm gonna click command A to select all of the images then open and you can see it's it's got them all listed here and then I'm gonna click OK alright so what the computer has done is it's taken all of the files and it's loaded them into a single image but a single image with multiple layers you could see all of the layers here okay the next step is to crop the image so Photoshop by default will put the first image on the top of your stack of layers here um, but I don't want to use this image here to make my crop I want to use an image at the lung bases so in order to do that I have to I'm going to scroll down to one of these lower lung images um, I'm going to right click on the little eyeball next to that layer and then click on show slash hide all other layers and then basically it's going to show me that one layer and the reason why I want to make my crop from this image is because the lungs are wider here and if I make my crop from the higher up image, I might lose some of the lung bases. So what I'm going to do first is zoom up the image. So take this little magnifying box and zoom that in. Then I'm going to use this rectangular marquee tool, which is the shortcut is M. And I'm just going to make a selection with that. I just want the lungs. I want to crop out all of the soft tissue. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to go to image and crop and so what you'll notice um, is that not only did you crop that layer but if I go to my top layer my first layer that one's also cropped too so you could see that if I made the crop on this layer and I only cropped out what I wanted based on this image I would have lost the edges of the lung at the lung bases so cropping is important it's important to use the appropriate image when you want to crop. All right, once you've got the images cropped the way you want it, the next step is to actually make the animation. So in order to do that, go up to Window, and then go to Timeline, and then click this button that says Create Frame Animation. There's only going to be one little frame there, so what you have to do is click this little menu bar, then click make frames from layers and then it'll put every layer in but for some reason Photoshop starts with the last image instead of the first image so what you have to do is click this little button and then click reverse frames and then you can go ahead and click forever here and then play to see what it looks like And then this is the point where you can take out frames if you want. And you know what? I don't think I need this last frame here. So I'm going to click it and then click the delete button. So I trimmed it up by one frame. Then I can see what that looks like. And then I think this is going a little bit too fast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the first frame, push shift, and then click the last frame. Then I'm going to click this little arrow button down. And then I can set the delay to whatever I want. In this case, I want to make it 0.3 seconds. So I'm going to click Other. Then I'm going to type in 0.3. And you can see it changed the delay to 0.3 for all of the frames. I'm just going to play that. That's going a little bit slower. And I think that's the way I want it. So I'm going to stop that and save it like that. Okay, and the last step is to save this as a GIF. So what you want to do is go to File, go to Export, go to Save for Web Legacy. And then I like to zoom this up to see what it looks like with my different settings. You want to make sure that this is set to GIF and not like JPEG or something. And then for this thing that says Perceptual, that's typically not what you want to use for the images that we use for radiology. Um, you can go through each one of these, but I tend to use adaptive 
that's just the way that it sets the 16 colors. Um, and you want to make sure that this, this is set to 16. If, it, if you set it to 32, it doesn't really look that much better, but it increases the file size. And if you set it to eight colors, for a CT, it starts to look kind of noisy. So I think that if you just leave it how it is at 16, then you'll get the right balance of file size and image quality. And then you want to look down here and go to looping options and make sure it's set to forever if you want it to keep looping over and over again rather than just once. And then just click save. And then here I'm just going to call this NSIP and put it on my desktop and click save. The last thing that I wanted to show you is how these work in an actual PowerPoint. So I've just created a blank PowerPoint here and I'm just going to drag and drop my little image in there. That's my animated GIF. And I'm just going to start the PowerPoint and show you how fast these things load. So you can see that once you go to the slide, it starts the animated GIF right away and there's absolutely no delay as opposed to most video files in which it takes a while for it to load first if it loads at all, and then you have to click on the video file to make it start playing. And that's really all there is to it. These things really only take a couple minutes to make, and I think you'll find that they add a lot to your PowerPoint presentations. If anybody has any questions about any of the steps, or if you're stuck on any of the steps, um, feel free to email me, or you could page me, and I'll be happy to help out. Okay, thanks.